Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie Podcast. How good is that? Welcome to the podcast, guys. Good to have you on board. Uh, today's podcast is more of a public service announcement. Uh, it's mm. more of a warning to the community. That's um, good of you. Kay Ritchie, an incident happened over the weekend with my family. One family member oh. down. Down, down. Are they okay? Needed rescuing. Oh. Um, and this often happens at this well, time of the trip, year. You shouldn't trip your kids like that. I didn't no. know. Did you fall into the... <laughs> Sorry, mate. Yeah. Did you fall into the fridge again? Or the... Oh. Oh, the deep whoa. freeze out the deep freeze out the back. Have you got one of those freezers? Not like the upright, the I one that's like the top. You wouldn't do keep that. Your, keep I wouldn't do that a week. Because no. remember, you know, how do you stop Weaver from drowning? Mm-hmm. Take his foot off. Take your foot off his head. Well delivered. Get the punchline, right? <laughs> Um, it was as good as mine with the care. deep freeze. Well, I didn't fall into a fridge. No, another family member had a bit of an issue. Um, so when you hear that, heed that warning. Heed that warning. Uh, I'll tell you more very soon. This is the Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie podcast. Huey's 15 years of age now, my eldest, and we over the weekend we gave him the first opportunity to drive a car, which was probably a stupid move because I didn't well, know there illegal. was an event. <laughs> I didn't know there was an event on at Bathurst. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. Oh. And, <laughs> and there were a lot of cars. There was a lot of cars around <laughs> at the time. No, no, no. This was over the school holidays. We were out in the country, and it was on a. It was basically on a straight road, just to see how his awareness is, because he's he's a year away, guys. Yeah, from getting yeah. his L's. My how God. scary, isn't it? And I mean, you know what? People do this. I mean, I think if you've brought up on a farm, you, you jump in behind a wheel oh, very mate. early. Oh, you, you've got uh, 10 year olds driving oh, cars. Oh, yeah. You, you, right, fin- yeah. you finish on mum's boob and you're straight behind the wheel. That's what well, happens in the country. Well, well, it depends how long you early. breastfeed for, well, I guess. That's so true. You I could be 13. A bottle in one hand and a steering wheel in the other. Is you that know what I mean? That's what I'm saying, mate. When yeah, you're like up on the land, <laughs> you rip straight into it. Sometimes you can get a little bit confident as a parent. This is over in the States. Have a listen to this news story. An East Toledo man is facing charges tonight after he was allegedly run over by his nine-year-old son while he was trying, reportedly trying to teach the child to drive. Documents indicate Williams was standing in the door jam while his son sat in the driver's seat. That is when the child accidentally pressed the gas pedal instead of the brake, police said. Williams was knocked down, dragged beneath the car across the street. Oh, oh classic. Mm-hmm. Mixing Clay- up the pedals. Can happen. This is, this is an amazing name. Clay Juan. Oh, Clay, Clay Juan Williams. Oh, no. So Clay Juan, dad was there. He said, yeah, well, why don't you jump in behind the wheel? So he's got the door open. So he's right there with the kid, yep. thinking the kid's going to go forward. But unfortunately, the kid's put it into reverse. And because the door was open, he's dragged dad of underneath course. the car. Jeez. Is dad Nine- okay? Yeah, Dad's okay. okay. Totally fine. Um, uh, he's, I mean, he's, his ego's still a bit dented yeah. that we had a go at Clay Juan, his Clay name. Juan, but how do we uh, spell Clay Juan? Well, how else would you say it? It's well, I C- don't know. Well, it's C L E J U A N. Clay Juan. That's Cla- yeah. that's Clay Juan. I thought you may be mispronouncing it. I mean, no, you never apologies, Clay Juan. apologies for um, doubting uh, your reading uh, ability. I had a mate in a similar situation. Fit six fifty. He was young, and the dad was trying to show him around the car, and he sat behind the wheel and uh, thought he had it in reverse, and just straight through the garage roller door. Yeah, yeah it's, you know what I mean. Bang, see, that can you, happen. Do you know what motorbikes are the same? Mm. Like they, this is the thing. You get on, and you know when you go, when you go to give it a squirt yep. and accelerate. The thing is, people can't. They don't realise that you then have to open your hand to put on the brakes. Yeah, yeah. And they go to brake, but they accelerate more, and they just oh, take, that take what off. In, You're take on your off back into wheel. a tree. Yeah, yeah, you are. Dawn in Weatherill Hill Park. Hello. Hello. How are you guys? Dawn, how old were you? So I was 14 when my parents decided to let me jump in and give me a go. Right, were you on the land, Dawn? Uh, we were just at a local empty car park. Yeah, okay. And, okay. Um, How'd you go, Dawn? Classic mix-up of the pedals. Um, instead of reversing, I accelerated and we hit a tree. Ah, that'll do it. Oh, Dawn. Yeah. You get a branch through the back window or anything like that, Dawn? Who um, had the sh- bugged, I buggered up the car. Yeah. Uh, who, who had the short fuse, Mum or Dad, Dawn? Well, they were both there at the time, um, yeah. and I think I nearly gave Dad a heart attack. Yeah. And Mum, had, <laughs> Mum was out, out cold in the back. She was just had no idea. She was just so angry and upset. And, <laughs> and probably angry with Dad because it would have been his idea. Yeah. I yeah, knew we I shouldn't said. have done this, John. She'll be right, well, you, 
Port Nalunga Football Club, all it was was an oval mm-hmm. and goalposts at either end of the oval. Good luck. And my sister, the first time she got into a car, drove straight into the goalpost. Of course she that? did. How do you do that? <laughs> all that space. Mal, welcome to the show. What's your story? Uh, yeah, the, uh, the old boys back back in the 90s used to make, uh, let me drive to the pub and back. Oh, oh God, yes. Mal. Mal. How old were you at the time? About 15. Oh, oh but Mal. What, so they wouldn't be drink driving, they let you drive? Yeah, well, at the time, like, I always used to, um, like, uh, when my parents were shopping or whatnot, I'd take my dad's uh, old uh, board around the, uh, just around the house, little... Street. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They caught me a couple of times, so they thought, "Oh, you want to drive? You can drive me over to the pub." <laughs> so I'd drop them off, and um, when I'd pick them up, um, sometimes I'd see a blue over, it, like in the car park. Yeah. Out. yeah. Um, yeah, so it was, yeah, it was pretty fun. Yeah, Matt, um, interesting, isn't it, when the person without a licence is a better I mean, option than those with? So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well said. Yeah, when, yeah. Some, sometimes it is, you got to throw them into the deep end. I mean, remember Laurie Lawrence, the swimming coach? He yep. used to do that with kids with swimming. Remember, he used to just throw them straight in the pool. Yeah, you got to fend for yourself. You know, but this is how you end up with a disaster <laughs> yeah, happening. Yeah, yeah, I, I mean, I know it, it sounds fun in hindsight when everything turns out okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But if it doesn't, well, then it's not. Good. The Fitzy and Ripper with Kate Ritchie Podcast. Let me bring this one to everyone's attention. There's a danger out there right now at this time of the year. You must be very, very careful. Now, we got on our bikes and headed to the park yesterday. The uh, park? Yeah, we went to the, the park. park. Did a half, a triple p- pike? Did, did a triple <laughs> pike, mate, down at the park. Um, took the soccer ball down there, got an ice cream, um, had a really good time. That was until we were attacked. And unfortunately, I turned around and had a look at Jack and he was on the ground. He'd fallen off his bike. Thank God he had his safety cap on the helmet. He was okay. No injuries, but he was on the ground screaming. (laughs) And I ran over. I said, mate, what's going on? What have you done? He said, I've been hit. I've been hit. They swooped me. Oh, yeah. He's been swooped. Do you you know what? I don't know what's the the best plan of attack in that situation Mm. is to help your child or to get out your phone and film it because it is very entertaining. You would have been continuing to eat your ice cream. Well, I was having my ice cream Nothing, Nothing less attractive than a man... Licking a scoop of ice cream out of a waffle cone, if you ask me. <laughs> a middle-aged, chubby man standing in a park with I'm, his giant oh, tongue licking I'm a sorry, scoop. I'm sorry, guys. I, no. I mean, it's cute with the kids, it's, but... Kate, we're, we're not eating our Ben and Jerry's to impress you, mate. Oh, we, look, it's we, so we, fine. I'm not... I don't... Get, it's so... Is there a like, cut-off age, Kate? And the other thing is, it's nice that you've taken the kids to the park and you're having yeah. an ice cream. I'm like... or, But, I mean, what if you don't have kids? And you're just a random single man licking oh. ice cream, licking your boysenberry well, out of your waffle cone. Oh, I love a bit of boysenberry. <laughs> Come on. Anyway, I, okay, back to the swooping. Just, I mean, where's Is the cut-off it, age, though, on the ice cream? Because I would have liked to have 35. thought that I can still stand in a park and lick oh. an ice cream. If you're having a paddle pop, I get it. It's kind of retro. Oh, um, so there's okay. a stylish ice cream. <laughs> yes. can, can I throw another one at you? Yeah. The other day. Gay time. Was, oh, no. Oh, oh my dad bu- loves a gay time. Doesn't he? I was by myself. <laughs> I was by myself <laughs> doing, anni- annihilating a yo chi. Now, this is a frozen <sighs> yogurt. And I, know. I was so proud of the strawberries and the blueberries with a bit of Nutella on top mm-hmm. that I was Ooh, just looking. Naughty. I was getting so into it that I looked around and there was a couple looking at me going, oh my. Oh my God, he's enjoying that a little bit too much. Is he yeah. allowed to do that, Kate? Is that socially acceptable for well, one grown man to have a yochi well, in public? You're only allowed to have a yochi well, in public if you're taking a thousand selfies and then uploading it to the ground. So true. Um, Make sure you do. Were, were so, they? Was it the miners? It was a miner. Yeah. Indian miner so it's bird. not the magpies at the no, moment. It wasn't. What? And, and there he was on the ground. And when I ran over and he what, said, "I've been Fortescue s- or what? What, what, what miner Indian, did he work Indian, for? Indian miner, miner birds." <laughs> They were the imports, actually. They're not a natural species to Australia. Well, they're a... Na- no, not to... No. So, anyway, he's been attacked by a foreigner. 
<laughs> he's been he's been hit over be the very back. Very careful, oh, no. mate. Been hit yeah. over the back of the head. Do you know what the um, other thing was? Too? They're funny though, aren't they? Because they don't let up and they no. work in teams. So they almost continued when he was on the ground. And I thought, you feel the animals. So and we'd seen a guy on the way to the park who had some cable ties sticking out of his helmet. We all went, look at that idiot. Oh. Which is highly attractive. <laughs> yeah, doesn't that look good? So yeah, Kate, there was a guy work? on a bike licking an ice cream, riding a <laughs> wearing a an, oh, wearing with cable an ties. ice cream an ice cream container yeah. on his head. With, Ooh, what a hottie. With a, with a set of eyes drawn on the back of it. <laughs> Swooping and, season's here and I'm safe. And if he's just got off his uh, his uh, professional <laughs> yeah. bicycle or with whatever it is on. and he's clip-clopping, oh. clip-clopping <laughs> along. God, what? get me one of those. So Jack demanded that I hunt the bird down. I don't know what I'm going to do, guys. I don't know how to get back at it. Just don't go to the park. No ice cream for you. This is the Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie Podcast. Well, this man is a very busy man. The Social Media Summit was last week and then we roll into a royal visit which is not far away but also opening some preschools, a thousand of them, brand new. Premier Chris Minns, welcome to the show. G'day guys, thanks for having me on. Mate, thank you welcome. for joining us. Um, let's tick off the summit which took place last week, Chris. Congratulations on putting that together in the push to try and delay kids joining social media. Of course, we're asking for the age of 16. How did the summit play out um, from your point of view, mate? Look, it was good. Um, parts of it were really confronting and difficult uh, but needed to be spoken about, and that was obviously families that had lost uh, a loved one, particularly a child, because of uh, online access. We, we've said it repeatedly that this is a global, unregulated experiment on young people with yeah. very limited, if, if any, oversight, and the idea that we would just leave it up to Silicon Valley billionaires to basically educate and raise our children is, is ridiculous. Can I just also say, I don't think it would have gone ahead if it wasn't for you, Whippa, um, bringing this to the state and national agenda by just constantly calling out um, social media companies and the policies that they've been pursuing. Everybody has said over and over again, look, there's, no, there's not much point trying. They're too big. They're the biggest companies in the world. But I think we're going to get genuine change here, and you deserve a lot of credit for that. Well, to oh, you too, mate. That's lovely. Thank you for championing this. And, Chris, can I ask, because I was trying to work it out, the Prime Minister has committed to making an announcement in November, so to change the law around social media and kids and the age restriction. So... We understand that's going to happen. At this stage, we don't know what that looks like. He hasn't made that announcement, and I was quite concerned, to be honest, by Michelle Rowland's comments of some sort of watered-down version of not being at that age of 16. Um, With New South Wales, are you in a position now where you could go, hey, we've done the summit, we've looked at this, we've spoken to experts, we know what the people are calling for. In the state of New South Wales, I'd like to put my hand up and say we're going to start it right here. Could you do that? We could. Um, There was a report that the South Australian government commissioned from the former uh, High Court Judge French, who came and looked at this exact question and said the states could act unilaterally. Yeah. But you'd appreciate there's about a billion reasons why it's so much easier and better to do it at the national level, not the the least between states and you know, you cross from New South Wales into Queensland or these companies find another excuse to say, well, ge- geographically, we didn't know someone was located in the town of Richmond or just over the border in southern Queensland. Yeah, so yeah of course. The, the national approach is far better. It's got to be as high as possible. Yeah. The research and the experts at the social media summit, particularly in Sydney, were unam- unambiguous about that. The real harm happened... 14, 15, and 16. Mm. So putting a social media ban at 12 or 13 or some very low number like that isn't isn't going to make a major difference, particularly for the kids that are at their most vulnerable age. And mm. as you guys would know, people who are 16, most of them are spending at least three hours a day on social media. It's, oh, it's just so, it's just not. What about madness. productivity? I know. And it, life experience, yeah. I, know. I, I just um, thought on a state level, Chris, if you were to call it, Premier, if you were to say New South Wales is going to draw a line here and we're going to say it's 16, well then that would put a lot of um, pressure on the federal government to go, anything under that is watered down and, and a soft solution. 
Well, if we don't get a good outcome, and look, I've got to give, I, I think the federal government will, will act on this. They've, they've come out and said, no, something's got to change here. One of the first governments in the world to pursue it. And one of the reasons why the social media companies are so worried about Australia, even though it's a relatively small market and when you consider how much money they're making, yep. is because if Australia acts, a couple of the states in the US acts and then the European Union acts, well, all of a sudden, for markets that they have access to, more than half of them have got age restrictions and our children won't be commercialised the way they were previously. So. Uh, it's got to be as high as possible. Okay. Yeah. We're okay. going to pursue that. And and if, for example, I don't think they would, but if there was a change of government or, or you know, aliens came down and said yeah. the federal government's no longer in power, we would act unilaterally and so would South Australia. Yeah. Love that. Oh, that's Thank wonderful. You, Thank you're, you. You're, you're a busy man, Premier, at the moment. We're hearing rumours that you're actually going at the end of the week to go and pick up the king and queen from the wow. airport. Do you stand there with a sign, Premier, saying <laughs> Charles Windsor and Camilla, I'm here to pick you up, or, or what's king. the go? I should try that, actually. Why don't you put on a little, a little iPad at the bottom of the stairs? Yes, that's a little <laughs> yeah. hat. King, king on it. You can come with me. Is there, are you feeling yeah. a lot of pressure? Do you know what, you know, I, I mean, I know that if I had the opportunity to meet the king, um, I'd be like Googling all the rules and regulations around curtsying mm, and touching mm. and oh my goodness there's just so much touching. to know well you remember that what do you remember want to once do? upon a time somebody put their hand on the back of the queen on her lower back or something that when she right. visited the country and there and was they went uproar missing, never found that person again <laughs> yes I'm, um, not, so I'm not feeling enormous amounts of pressure I mean I could probably remember not to touch them um, <laughs> thanks, uh, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not suggesting you're that kind mm. of man, um, but I, I, I know there's a lot of protocol. Yeah, yeah. You know, well, I was talking to my mum the other day, and and she, she, I was telling her about it, and you know how the older generation like to get to the airport five or six hours before the plane arrives. <laughs> yeah. So um, she was saying, make sure you're early. I think, I think it gets there in the evening, Mum. She's like, well, look, midday's a good time, you know. You don't want to be... Oh, late. hilarious. She must be so proud of you. And I and um, I must take this opportunity to um, huh? thank you for uh, the lovely invitation that did arrive from your office and from, from you, Premier, um, to attend the Premier's barbecue next week. So um. I will... I, I am I, coming along and I will be seeing you there. So thank you very much. Sorry, Premier, just on that. That's really exciting, that event that's happening, Kate. <laughs> How do you define or, or work out who's invited to that? I just, um, it's great that Kate got an invite. <laughs> Um, I mean, what's the uh, criteria uh, look, Premier, to, to get an invite? To, no, I have to say, um, I, I, I mean, some. I was never going to say no, but I'm certainly not going to say no when these knuckleheads didn't get their own invitation. <laughs> Well, the short answer is I have no idea. Um, oh. I don't know how the list was. Drawn. I'm sorry, Kate. Actually, somebody somebody got the invitation and and said I'll um, put it on social media of all places and said they're not going to come. I um, saw and on, that. And on the invitation, it was from Chris Mins and Anna Mins, which is who's my wife. Yeah, yeah. And Anna was on Twitter and said. What is this? Who am I invited? She had no idea she was on the invitation. She had gone out across Disney. So. Well, she was probably upset with you because she, she would be asking, if you're going to throw a barbecue, Chris, can you at least let me know so I can get the catering underway? Yeah, am I doing the coleslaw, you know? Yeah, what are you, she's got her own guest list. What are you throwing on the barbecue? A bit of pheasant, or what will you have for the king and queen, Chris? <laughs> well, game, yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> I, I mean, should have more information about this. Yeah, I'm can you freak out about the visit? <laughs> now he's nervous about it. Well, I anyways, probably should have put some more time into this uh, the whole preparation well, of it. I no, think, I'm sure it's under control. I think you're probably still finalising that invite list, Chris. So if there's any late ones, they'll probably <laughs> no, come through I'm in the next. Sure, it's all time. Uh-huh. Yeah, so, yeah. It's just, fine. Yep. That's all right. Just don't let them go through the Roselle interchange on the way out there. They might be stuck in there for a while, Chris. <laughs> Thank you, mate. We're very Thank excited you. about the Royal Tour. Appreciate you coming on the show. Thanks, guys. I appreciate you having me on. Oh, you're the best. Thanks. Okay, the public can see the King and Queen next Tuesday at the Opera House as see, part of their tour. See you there, Whip. Still no invite. The Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie Podcast. Who's ready for Song Song? Let's get involved. Let me sing that song. Song, song. Louder. Louder. Easy round. Easy, easy Don't round. Say that. I've gone through it. You know you spent the weekend thinking about this, Kate Ritchie, because you are so competitive. 
dreading it. Here we go, guys. <laughs> Can't go out in the first round. The word is life. Oh, life. life. Oh, life. Oh, who got that? You got life that, Kate. Beautiful. Um, what a beautiful life. Beautiful day. No, yes, sorry. Uh, <laughs> life. Where are you, Tom? Uh, is it Tom Cochran, Life is a Highway? Life is a highway. Oh, I love that song. Tom, that's really good. Where are you, Ryan James? Um, Bye. Life. At the time, the time of my life. Dirty dancing. Who sang that? I don't um, know. I missed the dirty dancing kind of thing. That was Green Day. <laughs> oh, sorry. sorry. Um, that was um, Bill Medley and Jennifer Warnes. Don't worry Warns. about it. Okay. Bill Medley and Jennifer Warnes. Was that my her name? combination. Wasn't Jennifer the name of the actress? Yeah, they tied it in. Okay, here we go. The word is... Song. Song, so song, song, song. Sad Not song. Not a song, mate. Sad song. Yeah. Hey. So Elton song. John. Yeah. Sing, sing mm. a song. Okay. Make it loud. Let the whole world sing along. <laughs> oh, not wow. like that. It's beautiful. Tom, are you joining us? Oh, it's a what little about, bit is it funny. Selena Gomez? Does she have... Does she, she does. Love you. You like a s- love song. Yes. I love you like a love song. Oh, baby. Yeah. I've never heard this. Oh, yeah, How do you know that oh, song? I, a, I'm, I'm a secret <laughs> Selena Gomez yeah. lover. I'm more Gomez, but yeah. I like so her. That's we a great have song. never played that on this FYI. station. There was a couple of obvious ones. Your song, Elton John. Oh, yes. It's a little... Tell yep. everybody this is your song. It's one of my favourite songs. What about Piano Man? Sarah Morales. Oh, the we need more Morales on her. She's great, isn't she? She's got a huge future. Here we go. Everybody's through to the third round. The word is cold. Cold, cold heart. Yes, because you're John. hot and you're cold. cold. You're in Katy Perry. Yes, thank you, Ryan James, Thomas. Cold. Cold. Oh, I'm got? not not doing cold, not doing cold well water. Like Justin oh, Bieber. Cold as ice. Cold as ice. Cold Bang, as ice. foreigner. Well Stop done. Through. Um, could have gone with Baby It's Cold Outside. Really but Baby It's Cold Outside. This is an awful song. I've got to go away. Have you heard? Have you listened to it? The lyrics are pretty questionable, aren't they? The lyrics are they? very yeah. questionable. Adina Menzel. About holding somebody against their will. You should never, ever do that, whatever the genders may be. All right, Don't what's play next? this at Christmas. Yeah, no, that's a terrible, terrible song. Next word. The word is tonight. Tonight. The tonight. Tonight. The night. We're going to feel all right. J-Lo. Yeah. Okay, Ryan, yes, because I don't know yeah. what that is. But what were you singing, Kate oh, Ritchie? Waiting for the tonight. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, I've got to think of another one now. Can you feel love tonight, Mike? Oh, no. Oh, Kate Ritchie, go on. <sighs> we welcomed you in, and now we're going to have to push you out. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's tonight's going to be a good night. Uh, Ryan James is through. Thomas Bryan, farewell, Kate. The word is help. Help, help by, by the Beatles. Beatles. Oh, that was so good. Um, that was so good. Come on. Come on, help Tom. 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 Oh, are you help. claiming that for help. I need yeah, somebody help. help. Yeah, I think Fitz has got it. Think about so a song we're playing. I had some hair. Oh, no. Oh. And you love that one. That's my favourite. Yeah, a bit of Morgan Wellen, Post Malone. Wellen. Ryan James takes out oh, songs, well done, songs, songs, well songs. Well done. Song. Look what how happy he is about <laughs> This is the Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie podcast. We have a bit of a royal visit. We just spoke to the Premier, Chris Minns. He wasn't sure of the protocol either, and he did confirm that he will be standing at the airport on Thursday with a bit of cardboard that just has King written in a posca. Maybe. He might, have an, it? He, might, he might have it covered King. in streamers and balloons and a little bouquet oh. of fa- flowers for Camilla. <laughs> <Farters>. <laughs> I didn't think... 
I didn't know they were staying at the Darling at the star. That's Are a they? good effort. I think they don't mind getting on the old roulette wheel every now and then as well. He so loves it, the king. Where do, they, where do they stay? They stay next to Kirribilli House, don't they? Well, they Ad- Admiralty Ad- House? Ad- Admiralty House. The, so that's the one that overlooks the harbour and the opera house, yes. isn't it? And the harbour bridge. And people quite often mistake that for Kirribilli House because it's yes. such a grand building. What, from where, where if you're on this, uh, on this side, mm. on the city side, and you look over... Yep. Is the house you see there not the front of Kirribilli? No, no. That you see, you would see the house with the columns. Yes, many columns. That's Admiralty House. Wow, what a view they'll have! So, which is the house that is always there for the king and queen when they want to visit Australia? I mean, who's? Why aren't they Airbnbing that That's when a they're really not good question. here? They could make a fortune. Imagine if you had an Australia Day Lotto where you got the house for a week. Everyone's well, in the draw. If you've hey, got honey, a, if you've got a passport, you're in the draw. Honey, I'm on stays. This place looks all right. Yeah, if we all throw in, there's quite a few bedrooms. Here we go. But no, um, uh, the premier didn't seem too perturbed about meeting them. That's what I quite like about him. He no. wasn't, he wasn't uh, overly nervous, and I think. It, He's a polite man, and he knows all the rules. I guess he's not too. over thinking what it's going to be like to to meet the royal. If the royals, if you have met a royal, just quickly give 10. us a call. Thirteen twenty four ten. I love those stories. How did you? And I love it when it's out of the blue. Like you can line up with thousands of people at the opera house, and sure, you can go there and you might get a handshake if you're there early. But I love those stories of where you might be somewhere, and all of a sudden they walk into a shop or something, and well, you're all there, and they're coming in to buy napkins. Do you know, it, it's a dangerous phase at the moment for the king because did you see recently with the All Blacks female rugby team, did you see that? Oh, I What's did happened? see that video. S- so they all decided, because you, your etiquette is that you, uh, you obviously just bow your head and you don't really ask her questions or him questions, but they decided to ask for a hug, and he said yes, and the whole team gathered around Prince Charles that was and awesome. hugged him. Yeah, it was. It was a lovely video. He looked he looked childlike almost. Kate, you have, you've met the king before when he was a prince. I did. I, did, I met Prince Charles. And did you curtsy? I did curtsy. Or did you handshake? I curtsy. Or did you kiss on the neck? I, uh, yeah, I did. And I licked or did his you ear. Go in, <laughs> did you go in with like a bra boy's handshake? Yeah. Where it's no. Just, I was very Bang. polite. Royalty. I think I've, spoke, I've spoken about it on air before. I was um, a guest at the uh, Royal Command performance in London, of course, where they, you know, the, mm. there was su- such great acts. Because of the pantomimes you've done over there. Yes. And so I was there at Christmas and at the interval um, I was backstage with some people and um, I had the opportunity to meet him and it was very, that was very exciting. But I'm hoping that as a result of receiving an invitation to to the Premier's uh, barbecue yeah. next Tuesday, that I might be able to say hello S- again. Sneaking a kiss. No, I'm not. There's no kissing. Deanne in Rockdale, hello. Hi, how you, are you you've guys? You've met a royal, is that correct? Who was it? I have met a royal, yes. <laughs> Who was I it? Met Prince, Prince Philip. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, you poor bugger. I mean, that's oh, the no. lesser one. Well, he wasn't sweating, was he? Because he can't. So where was this? No, that's, no, 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 that's Andrew. Andrew. Oh, that's Andrew. Andrew. Sorry. That's Andrew. Philip is... No one really knows much about Philip, but where were you, Deanne? I was living in Scotland at the time, and the company I worked with did a lot of work with the Outward Bound Trust, yeah. and he was patron of the Outward Bound Trust. And my boss got invited along to, like, a morning-type... Um, meet and greet at some grand place in Scotland and he mm. just told me he couldn't be bothered would I like to go instead so I did um, and it was just him walking around a room with a select few people that worked with the trust yep. and oh. he was shaking hands and had Gosh. a pint of beer in his other hand Did he do any oh, racist gear? Right. He was quite well known uh, for being highly inappropriate Yeah, he wasn't racist that day but no, he really day was off. the day before mm. Oh, <laughs> That's Every second day. Drove his Range one Rover day into on, a tree. One day off. off. Uh, 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 who else are we going to? We've got here? Sarah here. we got Sarah. Well, Sarah, Sarah is from the UK, okay. but you're visiting family in Manly at the moment. Sarah, have you met the Royals? Morning, guys. Yeah, yeah. I used to work for them. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> That's yeah, exciting. Know, in what kind of role? 
So I was I uh, was a private secretary or a personal secretary to members of the royal family in the nineties for five years. So what does that mean? What did you do? What did your day look like? So I organised events. So my day looked like organising all sorts of events when they went out and about um, visiting counties and visiting countries. I'd put their portfolios together. I'd help organise their speeches. I'd organise their transport. It was a big team. Oh, oh my God. how great! I know, cool. And I met my husband there. He was an aquarium. Oh, so, um, an aquarium. Yeah. He was an aquarium. Aqua- it's called an aquarium. <laughs> okay. So, okay, you're into star signs. <laughs> no, I know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. you must have been we, a good I don't, match. I don't know what his star sign is, but um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, no. So the aquarius go with the members of the royal family. They come from the services and they they accompany them on visits. Awesome. So, uh, King Charles will come with an aquarium. Right. Queen Camilla will come with a Camilla on, uh, with a, an aquarium on the visit. Okay. So, yeah. oh, I've got a question for you then. Yeah, when you good. when you do meet the royals, because I am uh, mm. attending an event where Here they will are. be, and yeah, I'm not really, sure. I know. I've it, heard. I, well, yeah, I'm only <laughs> look. I wouldn't talk about it this much usually. It's just that the boys haven't been invited. <laughs> no, I'm not, I would talk about it as much as you can. Uh, so it really annoys them. It's <laughs> worth rubbing it in. But where, if uh, if uh, you are to be invited to something like that, I'm not sure if I will actually have the opportunity to meet them. But oh. are you allowed to gift them anything? Like a gift's uh, acceptable? Well, you or can, but yeah, you can, but they will, the, the aquarium or the lady in waiting, if it's the queen, will take it off. Yes. Um, away, so she, obviously they can't have things in their hands. And then they will probably, um, they have to. Um, they have to let everyone know what they've been given. They can't just take things uh, freely. And then you'll probably something. get a letter to thank you. Um, and and that will be that. So oh, they'll be delighted they? with gifts. But they. Would they, they be- would they Sorry, be aware yeah. of a shoey, Sarah? You okay. don't know where well, if, if Kate. No, well, that's. I'm it's not a going tradi- to. Do, I'm not going to gift a shoey. It's What's a tradition, a Sarah, where you take your shoe off in Australia and you pour mm-hmm. a beer in there, and then you you um, you consume the beer out of the shoe, Sarah. Nice, nice. We can make it a exactly. pin. I, I think you could make it a thing on this tour. I'm not sure that that is quite what we're going for here, but I think it would work. You could, it could work. Sarah, quick one regarding you, regarding all members of the royal family. Do yeah, you know yeah, if yeah. any of them? Any of them watched Home and Away? Oh, oh now that is a good question. Not to my knowledge. No, I was there then. I was there in the mid-90s, but not, yeah. not to you my never knowledge. We never sat down. No, I'm y- sorry you about weren't allowed. that. I'm sure, I'm sure they might have done. And if they were going to watch anything, it would have been Home and Away. Oh, so yes. Very good answer. Well, Sarah, you win. That's all we needed. That's a yes. That's a yes, because it's not Just- a no. Can we just get ask Sarah, who, I know now, and you, you don't work for them anymore, but who was your no, favourite? Who was the best to deal with, Sarah? Well, I, I just think, you know, I was very luck, lucky to work when the Queen was alive. So yeah. she really was, her, her team and, and Her Majesty, they were fantastic. She was an incredible woman. She's everything you read and hear and see. She was everything that she seemed to be, and, and that was a real privilege. Oh, that is so nice voice. to hear But that. it was a real privilege to be part of it then when she was alive. It's uh, memories I'll never forget. Yeah. Isn't that beautiful? Thank well, you Sarah. for calling. Thanks, Sez. That's exciting. This is the Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie podcast. I haven't heard this name for a while, Mr. James Blunt. Oh, I like James Blunt. He's a funny little yeah, he character, is. isn't he? It doesn't even matter if he's little. He's just a funny character. Well, I think he would have made it quite a lot of cash. Oh, heaps of cash. Over he reminds the years. everybody. If someone pays him out and says, we hate your music, it's crap, he lets everybody know, well... Hello, look at my houses. Yeah, I know I'm enjoying my life. Twitter po- Twitter is such a, like I've told you before, cess- cesspool of hate, but there are well, some highlights. You seem highlights. quite involved in it, Fitzy, for something there's, you hate so much. There's there's some highlights, and James Blunt is one of them. He, yeah. Uh, James Blunt on Twitter is one of the best going around. What about the bar that he's got in Ibiza? Does he really? His house. It's called Blunty's. Is it? Mm-hmm. Blunty's Backyard. So they do a lot it? of everybody How, back Why did they name it that? Because that's I think his, name. his name. Yeah, is, I know that. that was meant I think, to be um, some kind of lame joke. <laughs> anyway, he did have that massive album, of course, Your Beautiful Goodbye, My Lover, um, on Back to Bedlam. That's 20 yep. years old. Wow. Um, and to celebrate the re release, of course, of the 20 year, you know, the anniversary, mm-hmm. 20 years of Back to Bedlam. Everyone's doing he, it. He's taken to the socials and he's promised if it gets to number one, he might change his name. Have a listen to him. My name is James Blunt, and you have the power to absolutely f*** my life. I'm re-releasing my debut album, Back to Bedlam, on October the 11th. So as a way to give back to you, my adoring public, if Back to Bedlam re-enters the charts at number one, I will legally change my name. What will I change it to? 
Well, that's entirely up to you. I'll let the people decide. It's safe to say this is the most important democratic moment of the year. So he's, he's signed over the decision-making um, to the public. I mean, I guess it's a very clever marketing ploy. People are going to get more involved, get aren't they? It, yeah. It's like we're going to come up with the most ridiculous name and we're also going to download the mm-hmm. new album or the, well. the re-release of the album so we can have a funny name. What are we looking like? Do you want me to tell yeah. you what it is or do you want to hear right. him tell you? Well, a wouldn't rhyming, you, I wouldn't go with the rhyming slang. That's the first thing that I'm thinking of. I want you what to tell it? me. What is it? Oh, Kate. Oh, God, Kate. <laughs> you Kate's are the most generous crowd I've ever come across. Oh, well, I mean, this is funny. Okay. Okay, well, we you, want James Bryant okay, to tell us. Well, you never know. I haven't even listened to it. So here he is. Hey there, I'm here for a meeting. Great, what's the name? James Blunt. I haven't got that name down. Could it be under something else? Jimmy Spliff? No. Blames Junt? Nope. Devika Rigi? No. Itsy Bitsy Teeny Weeny Pop Stuff Awkward Song Machine? Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Blunty McBluntface. Go straight through. People have no imagination. So he's Blunty being called... McBluntface. Blunty it... McBluntface. Be so be. careful with that, don't you? It will be, yeah. without a doubt. Whenever they have these naming competitions yeah. across the world now, after Bodie McBo- McBoatface, n- I- I- his name will be changed to that. Did well, see, did I Ferry hadn't... McFerry face win down here? Oh, did yeah. Circular yeah. key. See, I and never it... heard of that until I read this story. Right. Yesterday, that was back in 2016, Fitz, where w- what did they do? They asked the British public to, to name a, an mm. important vessel. That's right. And they came back with Bodie McBoatface. I think they changed... <laughs> Changed it to something to um, acknowledge David Attenborough in the yeah, end. Yeah, they did. I do quite like it. Well, I think it's hilarious. But we should do something like that, and we can give it a bit of thought. Richie you know, Mc- like if, face. if we achieve something, mm. I don't know what that might be. Yeah. As a show, then we should all promise to do something or change our names. That would be crazy. Like that I'd would shave be crazy. my head. Would you? No. <laughs> what about just your eyebrows? No. What about uh, your top lip? Uh, your news is that was actually a really fun break. Fitzy made a really funny joke, and then you've talked. Now you've had a go at me about a hairy face. Your news is coming up next. <laughs> hairy McHairy face with Ash. <laughs> this is the Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie podcast. This is fascinating. Sydney woman Tammy Christopher Spallus. She's a specialist recruiter and also a career coach. Okay. So she gives you advice on what you should do in job interviews. Great advice like this. What not to do with an interview is fall asleep. I've had someone fall asleep in an interview. Don't do that. Um, That's another one. Here's some more advice if you're going for a job interview today. Please, for the love of God, if you're going to go for a job interview in person, have a shower, brush your teeth, (laughs) wash your hair, have good personal hygiene. So with that one, actually, she was saying during the pandemic, because there were Zoom meetings, there were, there were a lot of people that were getting through. They would do two job interviews on, on the computer. And then when they were actually meeting the employer in person, yeah. it was a bit like, whoo Oh, oh bit no. On, bit on the bugle. Yeah. Maybe have a shower. And, and you don't know that. You cannot pick that up until you meet that person, was, that their personal hygiene wasn't too good. You assume that's an obvious, don't you? Someone to brush the pegs and have a shower before an interview? Yeah. yeah. But obviously not. Get a bit lazy. She's also brought up, this is unbelievable, because, um, look, she's been, there's some widespread trends that have happened since the pandemic. Quiet quitting, which we've spoken on yep. this show before. Yep. Lazy girl jobs. Have you heard about this one? What are lazy girl jobs? Well, the lazy girl jobs are non-technical remote roles that pay decently, minimise co-worker interaction and allow a significant level of flexibility. Okay. Why are they called lazy girl? Are they lazy well, boy? No, that's, there was a, girl, that's well. a recliner. There's a girl on TikTok who came up with a name. Oh, Kate, so she's so that's, named. Yeah, so that'd be like also, data entry. There's also bare minimum Mondays. But this one I want to talk about <laughs> where, where grown people still rely on their parents quite a bit. Um, because she has spoken about, um, about a job interview um, that she's gone to and... 
The parents have got involved. Okay. What do you mean? So the parents have rocked up with the child mm-hmm. and answered questions for the child that, they, that the, the child cannot answer. Amazing. What do you... Oh, okay. Just amazing. So things like... Um, tell, tell what me do what you, you hope to get out of it? Yeah, what might your weakness be? And if the kid doesn't have an answer, he just looks to mum and dad and dad goes, well, he's a fantastic kid, but he's got a bit of a short fuse. That's because he's just so passionate. Thanks, dad. That's awesome. That's oh. it's I, I, it's just fascinating that and I know we rely on our parents. You get to a certain age, but independence you get to us when you turn eighteen and you start to become a bit more mature. Yeah. I mean, you've, there's got to be a moment where you let go of mum's hand and you go, mum, I can do this myself. Yeah, but, but not everyone does it. And on my feeling, how old's the kid? Do we know well, that? He's 38. Well, but, 19 years of age, Okay. Said, yeah. Well, look, I, maybe, maybe this kid hasn't reached that level of independence and it might be just mum and dad... Their concern, right? You know, like we really need this kid to get a job. Yep. It's going to be in the the best interest for them. I, like mum and dad want the best for yeah, their he's kids. Just, he's, 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 he's not going to be. He's not going to be able to manage it. He's himself. brought references in. In real person. That's what he's done. Yeah. What, what do your parents still do for you? 13, 24, 10. Give us a call if you know stories of this. I There was a group of girls that I went to high school with, and this was after they finished high school, stayed very good friends still. Mm-hmm. But about a couple of years later when they were like 20, 21, they went and did their gap year together. Here we yep. go. So they went overseas. One of the girls brought her mum with her because she was worried about public transport and awesome. how to get to places. Great. And, it, and it broke up that group of girls because they're like, you cannot bring... This is us. Yeah. Like, this is our first taste of independence together. You can't bring your mum with her. No. And she said, well, I'm afraid that we're going to miss buses and we're going to miss yeah. timetables. It was a bit weird when you took Claire Fizzle on the uh, <laughs> footy, trip. <laughs> footy trip at the end of the season for the Swans. That was a bit odd. But she did Mate, all the washing and she cleaned up after the guys. Well, didn't you go back to your, live with your parents when you were 28, 29? Probably 30. But the thing is, I... Did my mum more as a PA now. So she sort of runs things where I'll go, all right, so-and-so oh, needs so flowers rude. if you can sort that out. Mum will keep me up to date with, like, um, birthdays, family birthdays, important birthdays, and I'll go, okay, flick out a card to those people by there. Then we need a toy for so-and-so that I might be a godparent to if we could drop that off at the house. You say that I'm, to your mum. I'm more of a puppet master now. I'm fascinated, though, that your mum did all your homework for you in Year 12, yeah. and that's not a lie either, is it? Well, I mean, she didn't do very well, I mean, and she got 16 out of out of 100. So she lost her job there and moved into the PA role straight so after that. She got a stern talking to there from was, John. There was a redundancy. Chris, Christine, come over here. We need to go through your we need to go through your report card. This is horrible. <laughs> Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie is a Nova podcast. For more great shows like this, download the Nova Player via the App Store or Google Play. The Nova Player.